Are we ready? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. All, all board members except Sherry are present. She had another commitment tonight. Uh, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What'd you think we all did? <laughs> we lock hands next time? <laughs> Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 6 0. Uh, Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we pass the consent agenda. Second. Any comments, Don? Uh, a couple of items. Actually, no items on this one. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 6 0. Policy. Um, we haven't met nope. yet. No this meeting school year Southwest Metro uh, Southwest Metro had their meeting uh, last uh, Tuesday and uh, they're off to a good school year start uh, we had a nice presentation about one of the programs that was over there uh, that uh, dealt with students that had uh, difficulties uh, in in terms of, uh, of uh, how should I say it meeting their goals in school and uh, it, it was a very good meeting uh, and uh, other than that, uh, things are going well there. Okay. And CPAC is the next one, and uh, they are currently meeting at this time. You missed it. <laughs> you missed it. Community Ed. Um, at this time for Community Ed, uh, there's 121 uh, adult courses and 1,128 youth courses. The last meeting was uh, the last meeting was last uh, Thursday, and main topic was uh, getting the uh, set up for the uh, for the open house. Uh, kids company goes from Eagle View 176, Falcon Ridge 122, and and Raven Stream 181, and they have seven on a waiting list. Uh, this or not this on September 27th uh, at the park ballroom there is a uh, seminar and a bunch of vendors on aging well senior and pre, -se pre -se uh, senior people are uh, invited put on by community ed Pardon? is it sponsored by community ed it is com sponsored by community ed yes Thank you. Uh, Kitten, there's one other thing that I want to mention. Uh, the uh, Southwest Metro did a nice job of summarizing programs and uh, other important facts that uh, deal with the uh, uh, intermediate district. And so I'll pass that around. Everybody can have a copy of that. Thank you. Wellness Committee. Did not meet yet. Early childhood, have you had your no. quarterly? All right, superintendent reports. Okay, some things uh, coming up uh, in the month of October. Um, make sure everyone knows about uh, at our uh, work session in October, we'll be discussing the possibility of leaving ties. And I gave you some information of that, and that's the organization we belong to for information and a lot of information technology uh, services. And it's an organization that we joined seven years ago that uh, we really don't use hardly any services with them right now and um, we're, we're working with other districts figuring out a way to leave without a great penalty uh, to our district with that but uh, I'll be given more information on that like I said in October uh, other thing um, and I'm gonna give a presentation tonight on the operating levy so we'll do that on TV but we got about I think about 25 meetings scheduled I've uh, spoke at uh, to two groups so far, so uh, groups within the district, uh, within the community. We'll have three open meetings, one here, one Eagle View Elementary, and one at 
Lonsdale Public Library. So in all three communities, along with uh, meeting with some other groups. So we got that going on. Um, also at the October session, work session, we'll talk about ACT part participation. Uh, there's no requirement for all juniors to take it. Uh, by law now, we only pay for students who are in free and reduced lunch, but uh, I'm gonna just share some data with you so we can make an informed decision what the costs are, that type of thing, and, and have a recommendation uh, for you at that time. And the other thing to share with you, uh, just uh, enrollment's pretty settled down right now, but just on post-secondary enrollment, uh, we've got 18 full-time students that are taking PSEO at uh, local colleges, mainly Normandale, 26 of the uh, 37 go there. When I say 37, 18 full-time, and there's 19 part-time. Uh, with of that 19, only seven are taking just one PSEO class. And just so you know, that number has gradually uh, been going down the last three years. It's probably about half of what it was two years ago. And I think a uh, big reason why is uh, the classes that we're often offering here at New Prague High School, the changes that have been made uh, by Lonnie and Tom about offering uh, more CIS classes, AP classes, um, our mail class, our uh, off-site class, you know, our integrated learning class, those type, or I should say Mars program classes. Uh, we're finding our kids want to stay here and have those opportunities for learning. So very positive thing in that regard. And not to say PSEO is a bad thing. I think it's a fit for some kids, but I think if we can offer quality learning experiences here and they don't have to drive 30, 35 miles to go somewhere else and have a, you know, a strong, rigorous program, I think that's a positive. So that's all I got. I got a question regarding the ties. Uh, is this going to be a kind of an ongoing situation for a while, or you have no idea? Um, I, talk, I had a meeting today with 10 other superintendents, and uh, the one leading it thought uh, it would not be one that would drag out very long. Okay. That we'll have a decision made on this because uh, the meeting that we were at a few weeks ago, I think it was September 8th, um, they were trying to hold out hope, I think the executive committee, but uh, the people in the room probably were not as positive or optimistic after hearing everything. And uh, okay. I just think there's a lot of people that are in the same position we are. Uh, probably some of them that have been in it since the very beginning, founded, you know, founded ties with them. Uh, many of them are looking to get out right now. We've only been with ties since 2010. Mm -hmm. um, and we went in there for Cognos, that data warehouse right. um, system, and we don't use that. We haven't used that for two years now. So, and we have no, and so it's, I just get the feeling that's the direction it's going. I, okay. I, we'll see what happens. I'll keep you informed. We'll talk about the October session. We'll have, I will have a meeting coming up with ties here shortly uh, with, uh, quite a few school districts that want to uh, talk to the director and uh, let them know where they're standing to. So I think strength is in numbers. Okay. Was there, was there um, any kind of a commitment when we signed up in the first place as to how many years you had to stay with them? No, they had bylaws, but... Uh, uh, you can't really get out once you join. Yeah, That's once you get in... Bylaws were written. Written. Yes. <laughs> they, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give you some shocking numbers here, but when this is six months ago when Sandy and I met with the director and we're just like, we're not, you know, what we're paying in was approximately 25000 a year or whatever. We're not getting, we're, it's not worth, we're not in anything. Why are we doing this? And... Um, we asked to get out, and then they came back and said it would cost $330,000 to get out. And then, um, of course, we met with them again and, and gave our rational why it shouldn't be that much, which was totally ridiculous. And then they came back with it will cost 140000 to get out. So that's where it's at right now. Um, there's two ways to go about doing this. Um, one is to get other districts uh, to go with us and basically through the majority of uh, school districts in, that are in ties, basically saying they want to get out, the whole organization could be dissolved on a vote. Or the other thing is we'd, uh, by state statute, we could go to the uh, uh, commissioner, education commissioner, 
who will probably defer it to an administrative law judge who would make a decision school district by school district. So we have that state statute or we could go the other way. Uh, we'll see what happens. We're not going to pay the fee and um, yeah, we'll have to see what happens. And like I said, I'll have more information for you at the October work session. It's a good question. Any other questions? Uh, our first action item for tonight is to uh, approve the extended trip to Paris and Italy. Greg Tukowski presented this at our work session meeting um, just to kind of have the option for kids to take the, a, a trip overseas uh, for history that he would lead. Madam Chairman, I uh, motion that we accept the uh, trip to Paris and Italy and approve it. I'll second. And this is for the summer of 2019? Yes. Just so mm -hmm. they could gauge interest and start saving for the trip starting now. Yeah, I appreciate uh, uh, Mr. Tukulski for coming forward early with this. And uh, if you know him, it would be very well planned. Yeah, most of these trips have been very beneficial from what I can tell in the past anyway, so I don't have any problem with it. I wanted to go after he explained it to our work <laughs> <laughs> session. <laughs> Anyways, hey, any my other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 6-0. Passed. We're done. We just passed. Do you want to say something? All right, thank you. No <laughs> <laughs> questions, sir. Nope. Sure, you can't get up. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what I meant. Well, thank you. Yeah, no, we just uh, passed a 6 0 vote um, to approve it and just appreciate your advanced planning and, and attention to detail. and. Sounds like a great and trip, and ki kids Kitten's already can... volunteered to be a chaperone, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, activity account contract approval. Do we need an explanation on it? Or? Yeah, Sandy's going to do it. Okay. Yeah, per the um, um, activity account um, and the school board statutes, basically only a school board could enter into a contract, even for activity accounts. So this is one you approved last year for just the DJ services for homecoming, prom, and snowball. snowball. Yes. So just prom. ask that you approve that tonight for the year. There were three of them. Was prom too? Yeah, it's um, homecoming, prom. snowball, oh. and prom. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Nope. I'll make a motion we approve the activity account. I'll second. Can I ask, uh, are the expenses very much different from last year? No, very similar. Any other questions? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 6-0. Uh, next, we have to approve a new Prague Area Education Foundation grant. Mm. This one is to Ravenstream for a growing station um, to grow plants in the, at the school, uh, for $1,749. I'll make a motion to approve the, um, New Prague Education Foundation grant to Ravenstream. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 6-0. Preliminary levy. Yes, thank you. So tonight I'll be asking you to approve the preliminary levy at maximum level, which is what we do every year because the numbers this time of year are still very fluid and this year is no different. So I'll go through the major um, changes from the prior year and just make some comments on it. First of all, this does not include the expiring operating levy, which obviously expired with the levy in 2017. So if the vote passes, if the voters approve, the operating levy um, in November that will be added on to this. And is that the whole 800 amount that's not included in this or just the No, just the, just the 14670. Yeah, so then it would be 24670 that would be added. Um, it does, uh, if you recall last year, we had that issue with the changeover in the pupil units. It does include another prior year adjustment due to the finalizing of the changes in pupil units. That's the 198,000. Um, MDE had to really 
um, search to find out why that happened. They don't really have a good explanation, but it is money that we have coming to us, and it is as a result of that change in, in pupil units. Um, the board approved local option, excuse me, the board approved local optional levy equity and transition. Because our market values are increasing, that means the equaliz aid, equalization aid is decreasing again this year. That's gonna be happening every year that our market values increase. So in addition to the changes in pupil units, which always you know, makes our levy increase, um, the decrease in equalization aid increases our local, op our local levy. This is the last year of the economic development abatement levy, so that's, a, that's good news. So um, this is the last year you'll be seeing that, and then that will be closed out. Um, the building lease line, basically the bus garage is now paid for, so we don't have to levy for that anymore, but we do have the lease levy for the baseball fields now that we're adding. The, uh, the large increase in the general fund is the final year of implementing the long-term facilities maintenance. And actually part of this is in debt service for the high school roof. If you recall, when you approve the budget, um, or the LTFM, we are gonna be putting a, a new roof on the high school next year. And that piece of the levy is actually in the debt service fund. Um, but basically, uh, this is the final year of implementing that, that long-term um, facility maintenance levy. We're going from $292 per pupil unit to 380 That's why there's such a large increase. We also have a new levy for the Southwest Metro Intermediate District. Um, that's about $20,000. So the board approved that we would um, lease levy for, or we would levy for that. So it's possible when we do our final levy in December, um, we'd, we may not need all of this LTFM money, in which case we would under levy, but we'll decide that in December when we, uh, when we come to that. In community ed, basically the big change there is our, our school age childcare costs have increased substantially over the last couple of years. Um, that's the um, levy that we have for basically students um, with disabilities and servicing those kids in our kids company program. And those costs have really really increased a lot. And this dollar amount, that $190,000, includes both a prior year adjustment plus just an increase. We need to increase the amount of money that we're, we're getting for our school-age child care levy. How do they set that? Based on previous year's cost? Yep, yep. And it really exploded um, about a year ago, and that's why the prior year adjustment, and then we need to kind of do some catch-up here. And then debt service, you'll see a very large um, reduction for debt excess. I'm working with MDE. We just finished our audit last week. And um, our fund balance, our fund seven fund balance is going down. That was for uh, some capitalized interest that we had. So I'm working with MDE to take that out. But right now it's still showing. So I wanted to actually show what MDE is showing. So I believe that that debt excess is gonna go back to around that $250,000 mark. Um, but I'm still working with MDE on that. We have until December to do that, and I'm still working with them on that. Um, so that kind of summarizes the major changes here from the prior year, and um, we'll be um, asking, I'll be asking again that you um, certify the levy at maximum. That allows for all the changes that yet need to be made and the adjustments that need to be made, and then you'll do the final uh, levy approval in December. Uh, with our truth and taxation meeting. Any questions at all? No. Nope. I'll make a motion to approve the preliminary levy at maximum. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Do the, pre the whole presentation? Yep, we're going to do the presentation and um, it's going to be the highlight of the night. <laughs> Did you make a video? <laughs> yeah, video, no, not yet. That's coming. Um, but I'm going to go through the presentation so uh, people can see it uh, obviously on TV or, or check our website. And, and I, like I said, I've given two presentations. So Going over this, and, and like I tell people, I, I want people to understand what an operating levy is uh, when I finish this and, and why there is the need to renew and increase by 100. And, and what it is, it's basically revenue for essential services. 
It's our day-to-day -day operations, things that provide student support and programming. So whether it's classroom staffing, supplies, utilities, uh, or heat or air conditioning, uh, transportation, all our programming with activities and athletics, uh, that's money uh, that comes from the operating levy. And I make a big distinction between this and obviously our construction, uh, our, our bond referendum that we passed a couple of years ago in 2015, May of 2015, to build our additions and renova renovations. It's two separate levies. And what our current reality is with our school funding sources is to, to run our school day-to-day -day operations, 85%, most of it comes from the state. Local property taxes for us is 10.3%, and that's the part I'm talking about tonight. Uh, we get even much less from federal sources and then 1.8% from other. But the federal sources, and one of the reasons we don't get money is simply because of our demographics. Um, we, there is not, uh, we just didn't, we don't get that much compared to some other local districts. But 10% is from local property taxes I'm going to talk about today. Now, our fund balance history, and we've got a few people on the board that were uh, back here in 2002. 2006 7 and we were under 1% fund balance and uh, it was not a good time in that time but in 2007 was when we passed a referendum and I'll get, talk about a timeline then an operating levy referendum uh, which helped us grow that fund balance and obviously enrollment has helped us also and also I think uh, being good stewards of money that uh, it's steadily increased and as you see on the graph there in the fund balance history, um, our projections for this year is to go down uh, just under a million dollars and projected, uh, I, actually for this past year, we'll find out in the audit, and then for this year uh, to go down uh, at least two million more. Uh, Tim, yep. what is the uh, state recommended uh, amount that we have for um uh, fund balance. balance for fund fund balance, balance. It's usually most uh, audits will auditors will uh, say between eight and twelve percent. I would say the majority. Would you not, Sandy? Eight to twelve percent. And uh, right now, as a as a school district, as a school board, uh, we've set a minimum of eight percent right now. Um, you know, currently right now we'll probably finish. 16, 17 with the auditor, we're guessing between 20 and 22 percent. If you look at that 5.59 million, uh, it will be closer to 14 percent uh, of our fund balance. So we have a pattern of going down uh, right now, and obviously we're going to have to uh, tighten our belt uh, with that. And then obviously, too, uh, the importance of passing operating levy is even more important. Uh, comparisons, you know, as far as local operating levies, so people can see uh, our 10 comparable school districts, we're about right in the middle. We get $871 per student. Uh, most school districts will do, or not most, uh, some school districts will, I don't want to say this is a minimum, but common is 724 would be on the low end. You can see on the graph here, Chisago Lakes, up uh, close to 950, Monticello, 1200. Big Lake, when it has that black there, they also have a technology levy referendum to pay for, obviously, technology expenses. So if you add those together, they're almost at 1400 And our neighbor uh, to the east, uh, Northfield, um, together with the technology referendum, are getting about 2000 So if you ever, ha having the ability to do this, you now if you ever, ever hear about the disparity or read about the disparity between school districts, what that means is, Obviously, a lot of our comparable school districts are similar to us. We don't have a huge commercial or business base uh, to take the burden off the residential. And so I'll, I'll give you an example. I don't want to comment on Northfield right now. I'm not sure about, uh, I know they have more commercial than us, but I don't know how much more. But for example, Richfield, for example, they've got Best Buy and Southdale Mall right in their backyard. And so that takes a lot of pressure off their tax uh, property taxes for their residents. So when we, uh, for example, are at 871, the tax impact for us, uh, I'm not sure what Richfield at, but if it's $2,000 per student, 
they have probably similar to a tax impact on their residents that we do, but they're getting that much more, right? And I will say this Northfield too is they're going after I think a $112 million bond referendum in November, depending on the passage, but they want to increase their lo local operating revenue uh, levy by over $400. So they want to go $400 for their local operating levy. If that passes, the second question is a bond referendum. So they're really going for it. Uh, they have needs for building, but uh, they also have needs for local operating levy too. But um, the, the money that they're getting pursuant is quite a bit more than us. Well, it's basically over double. Go ahead. Uh, some other districts, Prior Lake gets almost 1,100 per student, and Lakeville, again, they have a technology levy, uh, so they're at about a little over $1,700 per student. So they're almost double than us. Now, keep in mind, you might say, well, how do we pay for our, our technology? It's simply out of the general fund, our, our operating levy, our, our general fund. So we don't have anything uh, separate, de de dedicated just to technology like some school districts. Statewide average, so people are aware, is just under $1,300 per student. So that is the state average. We're well below that. Now, a historical timeline. Okay, like I said, 2007, a very important passage of a local operating levy. And it was for five years at $757 per student. In 2011, um, as a district, we went out a year early, and just in case it didn't pass, we had a year to go for it. And uh, the school board at the time, the district decided to go with a $100 increase, basically for inflation. So it increased it from 757 to 857, and that went for, again, five years. But it didn't start until 2013. Also in 2013, and that was my first year as superintendent, uh, in that spring, they changed a the state law on how they basically counted per uh, pupil units. I'll just leave it at that. It's so complicated. I don't want to get into it. But uh, it, it actually helped us. It increased by $14. So we were getting $871 per student. And again, it was for five years. That five years now is up this year. We don't have an extra padded year, and, and people might be wondering, well, why, why didn't you go for it last year, or why you wait until it expires? Basically, because we just had the bond referendum that was uh, passed in uh, May of 2015. It was just too close together, um, and uh, we just feel this is the right thing to do to just have that little bit of a gap, and... Uh, I think people will understand what the need is for our district. So, and what Sandy was talking about a little bit earlier in the levy, there's a local optional levy portion of 424 that is board approved and uh, almost every district in the state does 424. And then we have the board approved for 300 and that's where you saw some of the districts and our comparables have 724. I think of the 330 districts in the state, all but 77 have a minimum of 724. So there's 70, 77 school districts that have just 424, uh, but pretty much all the rest have a minimum of 724. And of course, we have our voter approved, and this goes back again uh, to 2011, that began in 2013 was at $146.70 to get to $870. And this is what expires. And if you want to know what's at stake, it's $654,000. So um, that's why it's important to renew. And then like uh, we talked about, we want to increase by $100. And that requested increase will bring it to $970.70. And that amount is for 445000 and, and as we discuss this as a school board, again, to be able to account for inflation to make sure we're safe uh, and deciding to go with it for six years this time rather than five. And um, obviously it's very important and the whole total comes to just about $1.1 million uh, amount of dollars for that. But 970 is still, uh, you know, put this in, 
you know, how you perceive this is still over $300 less than the state average. And again, this is not to increase any program. It's not to, uh, it's just to maintain what our essential service and programs we have right now. Very important too, to renew and just go to $100 to minimize the tax impact uh, on our local residents. And like I said earlier, $100 to offset inflation. Um, some people have asked me, I mean, some think, you know, why just $100? Uh, most districts right now are going to the voters in November, a lot of them three to $500. Um, I'd rather be on the conservative side, and I think you do too. And if, you know, I mean, obviously if we get in a situation uh, where we need more, because we don't know what's gonna happen in the future with state aid or even federal aid, uh, you know, we can always go back uh, if there is a need two, three years down the road and, and, and do that. Um, the tax impact on the residential home, just like we did with the bond referendum, wanna show what is here for this. It's about $42 a year increase, so a $200,000 home. Uh, so it's about $3.50 a month. And like I said, we wanna have a minimal tax impact. We've just been through a bond referendum where property taxes are raised. So obviously we're very sensitive about that and keep it as minimal as possible. One thing to keep in mind for agricultural, the impact um, for an operating levy is different than a bond referendum uh, for construction. Uh, for, for this, it's just simply the homestead on that one acre. So it doesn't, it, it's just like a residential. The good news though, I will say, although we don't need to worry about a bond referendum for many years, I don't know, I won't be around for it, but uh, there is a, a tax break now, 40% tax impact or a break for uh, agriculture for farmers now uh, that has, was passed in the state legislature this past spring, which is a real, uh, step in the right direction because obviously it wasn't it wasn't a real fair thing uh, and I guess that's what the state legislature thought too so no greater uh, impact on the agriculture than it would be for a reg regular resident uh, the question will look like this and again we propose to increase our general education revenue or our operating revenue by two hundred forty six dollars and seventy cents per grade per pupil and keep in mind, the 146.70 is the renewal plus the 100, which makes a total of 246. It will raise taxes, like it says there, and it will be applicable for six years, uh, beginning with taxes payable in 2018. So I'll simply vote a yes uh, or vote a no. We will have information. Uh, Sean Brandt uh, is working hard on this right now. We'll have uh, something on our website, I think even beginning tomorrow, We'll have frequently asked questions. Uh, we'll have a video. We'll have my presentation on there. And uh, where to forward questions to also, just like we did last time. Any questions by the board right now? You said you presented a few times already. <coughs> Was there any confusion? It looks pretty simple, but. Uh, well, it's, uh, I think it's simple. If I can present, it's pretty simple. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, it's, uh, I, I've had a lot of positive comments. Uh, like I said, when I get up and speak, for example, if it's within district, it's something, I'll be honest, like I tell them before when I talk, um, I've talked to two different uh, buildings now. I'll be honest, when I was a teacher, or I'll even go back as when I was a principal, I really didn't understand it. I knew I had to support it because it was yeah. an important thing but I didn't know obviously what I know now. So what I wanna do is when I present it to them is present in a way so they first of all understand it. So if they get questions by community members or you know fellow colleagues, they can answer the questions, but they know they can send them to me um, if, they, if they can answer it. But I think uh, trying to keep it as very simple as possible uh, so they have an understanding of what it is and more importantly, why there is a need and uh, yeah, so far it's it's gone well, um, and uh, being very transparent about it. And uh, like I said, it's it's just to maintain essential services to keep what we have right now. We've got a lot of great things going. I think we've uh, done a great job, uh, you know, handling the money and uh, only using it on needs. And then, uh, you know, as we go forward, uh, just continue to get better. 
I know you're doing a lot of presentations. Is there any other type of campaigning we're doing? Everything seems pretty quiet out in the public right now. Is there anything we'd be, have to be concerned about or? I, 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 to me, I'll be, I, I think, you know, what we do on a daily basis, uh, weekly basis, I mean, and just in the past three, four years or whenever, you, you know, I think people saw there was a need for uh, facilities. I mean, that came through uh, when you hired a consultant to do the superintendent search. That why we ended the whole thing that began that process was uh, the input we got from parents, community members, staff, school board on what the priority was, and that was for facilities. I think when we talk about our daily work or yearly work, I think people trust uh, that we're not going to. Uh, ask for something that's a want, that, but when it's a need, that they'll support it. And I think, um, I think it's a need. And uh, to continue to do great things here, uh, we need to maintain these essential services. I, I guess what I was kind of saying is that we don't want to let our guard down and just assume it's going to pass. Oh, I will, I will, I will, I I will say, I, yeah, I will say this. I mean, besides all the presentation stuff like this. Um, it's just like preparing for a game. I mean, we've got to make sure we do a good job of communicating and work very hard mm -hmm. uh, to explain this. And, you know, it's up to, I mean, it's still going to be up to the voters, but uh, uh, the next couple months we'll work very hard to, uh, to get that community, just so everyone is informed. Uh, when I give this presentation, I'm not here to convince anyone what to vote. Again, it's to explain why we're doing it, what the need is, and people got to make a decision. Um, you know, obviously, if there's a, a vote yes committee outside of our district, I mean, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, but we'll work hard to make sure people have a good understanding of uh, why the need is. Other questions? Thank you. Right. Anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 6-0. Meeting adjourned. All right.